Ready? Okay. Welcome. I would like to welcome everyone to the Henry County Zoning Board meeting Thursday, May 9, 2013. We have a couple of housekeeping items we need to take care of. This meeting is being televised on the Henry County Channel 14 and will rebroadcast each Thursday at 7.30 p.m. A video of the meeting is also available on demand on the county website. Now would be a good time to turn off your cell phones. If you wish to speak, you will need to fill out a public hearing speaking card. We allot 10 minutes for those in favor of a case and 10 minutes in tho for those opposing the case. For example, if 10 people wish to speak, they all share the 10 minutes allotted and so on. Address the board, not the audience, when you come to speak. We will now have the invocation by Jim Fisher and the pledge. Our Father in heaven, please uh, let, let this board have the wisdom and knowledge and uh, foresight to, to consider these uh, items that are on our agenda and act in the best interest of the citizens uh, uh, as well as consider the uh, request of the applicants. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> this meeting is now called to order. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Motion carries. Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? Are there any staff comments? Um, just one quick reminder. Just one quick reminder. Can't hear you, Sherry. One quick reminder. Um, please make sure that when you all are making the motions, um, Chair, if you could just state for the record who um, actually makes the motion and who does the second um, for recording purposes. Thank you. But no okay. other additional comments from staff. Okay. Okay. If we're clear, we'll move on to the first item on the agenda, tax amendment. ULDC Amendment 1307, Ordinance to Amend Chapter 4, Site Design Standards, Section 4.01.09, Outdoor Lighting Standards, in accordance with Sections 12.0211 and 12.0300 of the Henry County Unified Land Development Code. This text amendment is countywide and will be presented by Bert Foster, Building Department Director. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I am Bert Foster, Director of the Building Department. The BOC approved the outdoor lighting ordinance in January of 2012 in response to a series of complaints the county received dating back through 2010 and 2011. The intent of the outdoor lighting ordinance is to preserve, protect, and enhance the lawful nighttime use of property through the use of appropriate lighting practices. To achieve this intent, the ordinance currently restricts the height of certain poles based on their proximity to residential properties and caps the allowable wattages in certain fixtures. Since the ordinance has been in place long enough for the county to put these requirements in practice, we found several unintended issues that we hope to address with this amendment tonight. First, by capping pole heights, we create situations where contractors must purchase non-industry standard poles. The industry standard is currently approximately 30 feet. Our ordinance, the way it's written now, requires poles to be no higher than 15 feet when they're within 50 feet of a residential property line, no higher than 
20 feet when they're within 51 feet to 300 feet of a residential property line. They can be as high as 25 feet if they're beyond 300 feet from a residential property line. So none of those pole heights even reach the current industry standard of 30 feet. Um, one, of the, one of the consequences of this is because the poles are set at a lower height, it's going to require more poles to illuminate the same amount of area. The, the space that needs to be illuminated does not change, but the height of the poles do. Therefore, you'll need more poles to light the same area. Uh, similar situation, uh, the, the ordinance also caps the wattages in certain mm -hmm. fixtures. By capping these, these wattages, you're creating a situation similar to the cap pole heights where the same amount of space needs to be illuminated, but due to the lower wattages, you'll need more fixtures to, to cover the same space. Um, staff met recently with representatives from each of the three electrical utility providers. Uh, at this meeting, we learned that uh, the proposal we're going to make tonight is more in line with what they have viewed um, throughout other jurisdictions. Um, I also learned from, from Georgia Power that they are in the process of retrofitting many of the existing fixtures out there that have the HID, uh, basically the high intensity gas bulbs. Those fixtures are being replaced with the more modern LED bulbs. They're about the size of a, maybe a quarter uh, and provide a lot more. Um, uh, they give you a much higher ability to control light fall and it's a more efficient, cheaper way to utilize energy. Uh, so in lieu of capping pole heights and wattages, staff is recommending removing these restrictions and require what's called a photometric report. This report should be prepared by a uh, lighting certified professional. And what it will do is it will show exactly where and at what intensity light falls throughout the commercial project. It'll show us right up to the property lines. It'll show us directly under the lights. Um, and therefore, we should be able to tell before the lights are even switched on if there's going to be any negative impacts on adjacent residential properties. Um, beyond that, staff is also adding language to the ordinance um, to clarify who, who on the county side is actually responsible for reviewing and approving these photometric reports. And we're asking for a provision to be included that allows the ULDC administrator to consider certain uses to be exempt from these requirements beyond those uses expre expressly stated to avoid unwarranted delays uh, when unique circumstances and situations present themselves. Again, staff is recommending approval of this ordinance as it's written in your exhibit book. And I'm, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Any comments from the board for the staff? Any comments from the public? In favor of the text amendment. Any comments from the public in the opposition of the text amendment? Call for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. It's been motioned by Mr. Fisher. Richard. Richard. And second by Mr. Babb. All in favor? Thank you. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Move to the second item on the agenda. Variance BR 1307, Jose Alvarez of Stockbridge, Georgia, requests a variance from development regulations for property located at 305 Sims Drive in land lots 126 of the 11th district. The request is to reduce the front and side yard setback requirements. The property is located in District 4, and Wanda Moore is representing planning staff. Good evening, board. Good evening, board. Um, as stated, uh, the application is uh, for a variance uh, for the front and side yard setbacks for the property located on um, the corner of Sims Drive and Old Conyers um, Road. The property is currently zoned residential agricultural, which is RA zoning district. And as such, in the current ULDC code, the front yard setback requirement is 75 feet. Um, the side yard setback is 20 feet for um, lots. And then on corner lots, it's um, required that they have 75% of the front yard setback. The applicant um, purchased the property uh, with the intention to uh, renovate the home and to live there with he and his wife. 
uh, unknowing that the house was considered a legal nonconforming use because throughout the years uh, right of way from Old Conyers Road and, and the um, allocation of uh, right of way and or um, prescriptive easement for Sims Drive um, took away the property. It was given to by, by the property owners in the past. Uh, the house was built in 1948. At the time there were no uh, zoning uh, requirements. Uh, it was built in accordance to the standards of the day. Uh, the staff, planning staff of Henry County has recommended approval of the requested variance which would allow the house to remain um, as it is as far as the location um, of the front yard and the side yard uh, reduction. The reduction um, will be, um, I apologize, the reduction for the front yard would be from 70, 75 feet, excuse me, I lost my place, to 45 feet and the side yard setback for the corner lot would be a reduction from 56.25 um, feet to 15 feet. Uh, with staff's approval, we have uh, three conditions that we're recommending. The first condition is that the existing primary structures shall not encroach further towards Old Conyers Road or Sims Drive. Condition number two is that any new structure located on site shall meet the requirements of the ULDC. And then number three is notwithstanding anything to the contrary herein, no zoning condition imposed herein shall be interpreted or applied in such a manner so as to require any violation of any existing building, development, stormwater, and or other applicable codes. And I can answer any questions. Okay. Any questions from the board? Will the applicant come forward? Good evening. My name is Jose Alvarez, and I'm the property owner on uh, 305 Sims Drive. And you know, I'd like to be able to re basically remodel the house because it, it was built, as she said, in 1948. So I'm just planning to you know, reconstruct it basically, but try not using the same uh, foundation, if I may. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Alvarez, do you plan to add anything to the exterior of the house? Mm, no. It's all going to be interior remodeling? Uh, well, basically interior, most of it, and, and exterior, just the siding and windows and doors. and. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? You may be seated, sir. Thank you. At this time, we will allow 10 minutes for those who want to speak in favor of the applicant. <laughs> My name is Jennifer Hill and I reside at 177 Stokes Drive, Stockbridge, Georgia. I pass his property every day taking my children to school and it was a very rundown piece of property and I was actually kind of relieved to see that somebody had come in and was taking it over and while the fencing is a little bit different, you know, going around it, it's just refreshing to see that somebody is going to come in and restore that old house and do something with it because it was quite an eyesore for the last several years to go by there every day on the way to school and back. Anyone else in favor of the, of the case? Is there anyone in opposition of the case? Will the applicant come forward? Does the board have any questions for the applicant? You may be seated, sir. Maybe call the case. Very Mr. Chairman, I recommend uh, that we pass this, this guy's uh, desire here. Second. I'll second it. 
It's been motioned by Mr. Babb and second by Mr. Butcher. All in favor? Motion passed. Move on to the third item on the agenda. Conditional use, CE 1304, Trio Properties of Fayetteville, Georgia, requests a conditional use for property located at 1705 Meredith Park Drive in Landlots 243 of the 2nd District. The request is for a sports and recreational establishment in the M1 Light Manufacturing Zoning District. The property is located in District 2 and Wonder Moore will be representing planning staff. Good evening again. Um, as stated, the uh, property is currently zoned uh, M1. The ULDC uh, requirements for M1 zoning uh, district uh, is that a conditional use be applied for for this type of um, use. Uh, the, um, the request is to um, is for, uh, as stated, a sports recreational facility um, doing business as CrossFit class. Um, CrossFit Clash is actually on site at the premises now and is operating as an office only um, with a, a business license for an office use as well as a, a sign um, permit uh, that's been issued by Henry County um, uh, Building Department. Staff has reviewed the application as recommended approval of the request with two conditions. Uh, the applicant shall stripe the rear parking area prior to the issuance of a business license for a sports recreational facility in accordance with ULDC Chapter 8, Section 8.02.07E, which states in brief that each off-site street parking shall be clearly marked. And then Condition 2 is notwithstanding anything to the contrary herein, no supplemental standards imposed herein shall be interpreted or applied in such a manner so as to require any violation of any existing building, development, stormwater, and or other applicable codes. Any questions for staff? No questions? Will the applicant come forward? Please state your name and address for the record. David Barber, representing Trio Properties, 180 Walter Way, Suite 114, Fayetteville, Georgia. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add to your <coughs> No, sir. Okay. Does the board have any questions for the applicant? I have one question now. How many, or what's the Ackman load do you plan to actually have out there at any given time? I don't know Jason, who is actually um, is the facility. He he can answer that question better. Answer that question for you. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The uh, occupancy is. Come on, come up to the board. Come up here, Hey, my name is Jason Sanders. Um, the occupancy um, is no more than, well, unless we're having a seminar, seminar it would be no more than around 20 to 25 people at a time. Does the board have any other questions? You may be seated, sir. Yes, sir. At this time, we'll, we will allow 10 minutes for those in favor of the case. You want in favor? No one in favor? At this point, we will allow 10 minutes for those in opposition of the case. Will you come back forward, sir? Does the board have any further questions for the applicant? No other questions? Will there be any other tenants in that building? Pardon me? Will there be any other tenants in There's that building? There's a possibility of three other tenants in the building, in the facility. That will be related to the cross training? No. Okay, you may be seated. I'd like to call the case. Conditional use, 
1304 Trio Properties of Fayetteville, Georgia, requests a conditional use for property located at 1705 Meredith Park Drive in Land Lots 243 of the 2nd District. The request is for a sports and recreational establishment in the M1 Light Manufacturing Zoning District, and the property is located in District 2. Do I have a motion? With the two conditions that staff has specified. Second. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? And that was motion by Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey and second by Tony. Mr. Tony. Okay. I'd like to move to the fourth item on the agenda. Conditional use 1306. Jennifer Hill of Stockbridge, Georgia, requests a conditional use for property located at 177 Stoke Drive in Land Lot 156 of the 12th District. The request is for a private membership recreational facility, not in a subdivision, and the property is located in District 5. Again, Wanda Moore is representing planning staff. Good evening again. Don't adjust your televisions. I'm still <laughs> Just kidding. The applicant um, is here today, Ms. Jennifer Hill of the SWIM Center, to request a conditional use for a private membership recreational facility. Um, SAF has um, uh, worked alongside uh, with the Zoning Advisory Board as well as the Board of Commissioners last month to um, uh, create and um, adopt a new ordinance that affords its citizens in Henry County the opportunity to have a home business that exceeds our current regulations for home business in a new category that affords you the opportunity to review um, commercial uses within residential zoning districts on a case-by-case -case basis. And as such, Ms. Um, Hill has operated the SWIM Center for quite a number of years and has taught quite a, a number of folks. Um, just a brief bit of history, uh, Ms. Hill, uh, as I stated, since 2006 has been teaching uh, swimming lessons at this location. Uh, the location is uh, accessed from her private residence off of Stokes Drive. Um, the access that provides the swim lesson students access is um, from the Clayton County side and is on off of Wilkerson Road. Uh, Ms. Hill, uh, was cited on July 24, 2012 uh, for exceeding the number of allowable students for a home occupation. And as such, uh, she applied for a text amendment um, for the ULDC because there were no provisions in our current code um, that afforded her the type of business that she had. Um, and um, within the last six to eight months, um, this request has been evaluated. Her um, text amendment was withdrawn, and um, with the Zoning Advisory Board and the Board of Commissioners' recommendation and initiation of the ordinance review, staff drafted um, and um, with in put from other jurisdictions um, surrounding Henry, Henry County, as well as other departments within Henry County, um, including Building Department, DOT, um, environmental compliance, and et cetera. Um, we drafted the provisions that are before you now for the um, private membership recreational facility outside of a subdivision. Um, in particular to her application, as stated, her main access is going to be off of a a gravel road which is accessed from Clayton County side and um, is shared by two other residents. Both of those residents are residents of Clayton County. They have provided the applicant um, sign affidavits um, uh, allowing the swim center to use the gravel drive access with provisions that Miss Hill is going to um, perpetually maintain that access um, through the duration and existence of the swim center business. Um, and that was included as part of the package that Ms. Hill made um, for application. Staff has reviewed um, her application, has recommended approval for this conditional use. Staff has recommended three conditions. Uh, the first one being that um, the applicant, her current um, back up just a little bit before I read this, the current parking facility that she uh, uses for her students 
has been on the Clayton County side. Um, the first condition is concerning that. Uh, staff re recommends approval of the request with condition number one that the applicant uh, will work towards providing Henry County a cross access easement um, that the applicant will have with the Clayton County property to allow the use of the existing off site parking facility. And then number two, that the applicant shall provide, uh, if required, an entry drive access permit from Wilkerson Road from Clayton County DOT. And number three is notwithstanding anything to the contrary, no supplemental standards imposed herein shall be interpreted or applied in such a manner so as to require any violation of any existing building, development, stormwater, and or other applicable codes. <coughs> Being that this is in District 5, I'm turning the chair over to Mr. Butcher. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board members for the staff? Being none, Ms. Hill, could you come up, please? She's going to bring you all some. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I know. And not, not that you all don't know exactly what my case is and everything, but I wanted to try to come prepared for everything you might throw at me tonight. Okay, and I'm sure I'm still not 100% prepared for everything you might throw at me, but... Please state I, your name and address for the record. Jennifer Hill, 177 Thank Stokes you. Drive, Stockbridge, Georgia, 30281. And I am requesting this conditional use so that we can continue offering swimming lessons as we have for the last six summers at my home residence um, located at 177 Stokes Drive. And as stated, we do use the easement access off of Wilkerson Road to gain access to our property. And in the packets that I have given you, just a couple of things to highlight and point out. The first part of the packet in there is the actual original application that I did with staff for this meeting tonight. And unfortunately, I did not receive the staff, um, I don't remember what it's called, to know about the provisions that were in there to um, be able to provide a little bit better documentation for you. But on that provision, the, um, with the following, with the conditions, I didn't receive that until tonight to know about the conditions. And so with the condition about the cross access easement, I will work towards gaining cross access easement with Clayton County. I've actually been working with Clayton County since April of last year, trying to purchase that entire Clayton County property. And they have recently stated that they've decided that they might want to hold on to that to decide if they're going to do something with that property. And so what the county attorney told me was that they have no problem with me using it as I have been for the last six years. But further on down the line, should they decide to do something with that property, then we may need to readdress that issue of the portion of their property that I'm using. Um, so that's just conversations that I've had with them regarding that. And then you have in there the the, the another copy of the information from my neighbors that we have been able to make amendments with. And I've included a lot of other things, pictures of the property, all of our certifications, my CPO certification, my other CPO that I use for my pool, all of our lifeguarding CPR certifications, water safety instructor certifications, a copy of my business license, a copy of my EIN number and all my LLC documentation. Um, and then, and then a, a safety checklist of all this, of the safety equipment that we have on hand um, there at the pool. Um, the record sheet of how I just pulled the record sheet from last July, since that was the biggest, busiest part of the month, where it shows you know the pool records and what the chlorine levels were on a daily basis. Last July, I included that in there as well. And then a listing of our customers that have come to the home pool. And if you were to go through and analyze that, you would know exactly how many people we have at an hour or on a daily basis through that. And then the customers are also sorted by city. 
because as we've pointed out before in previous hearings that we do have quite a percentage of people that come from outside of our county and in fact I ran the numbers and 11 percent of our customers are not from Henry County or Clayton County they're from outside of our county and so that's bringing ta you know their money from out of county dollars into Henry County to spend 20 percent of our customers are from Clayton County and then 69 percent of them are from Henry County that come there for swimming lessons and then finally the copies of the letters that parents have written on our behalf and the petition that we had going online I know parking was brought up in the work session as being an issue and I know I have some parents here that will probably come can come up and attest to the fact that while we while we do have you know 18 students in the pool at a time we don't have 18 cars because most of them are siblings and multiple children that come in and one you know multiple people in one vehicle and so while I do have 32 parking spaces I don't think that we've ever been at a point where there was no parking for people to come to and several of the parents that are here tonight ironically are our evening time parents because they work during the day and our evening hours are our busiest hours and you know they can attest that they've never came where they couldn't get a parking space to park and with the classes um, ending at the at every hour so in like the the last 10 minutes of the hour the new customers are coming in and then in the first 10 minutes of that hour the old customers are leaving so they're not really passing each other since we don't leave a gap in between classes so it kind of helps with the transportation so they're not having to pass each other on the road ones have already come in before the other ones have left and even with that exchange we still have ample parking during that overflow time period that they are in there together okay does the board have any questions for the applicant yes i have one question go ahead <clears throat> um this has been going on for a long time uh, you know through the development of this uh uh, ordinance which was passed uh, I believe by the Board of Commissioners in April but uh, uh, the, uh, the, the ordinance does stipulate that the Zoning Advisory Board uh, may, may make some additional requirements uh, as a condition of the approval uh, such as uh, res res restrictive hours of operations number of classes per day or students per session now, now, did I hear you say that you would that you would have a maximum of 18 students per per session? Yes. And in the work session, there was a um, topic brought up about like the potential for growth. And I'll tell you that if you were, if I were to have thought about that in hindsight, I and I could have printed out like our 2009, 10, 11, and 12 to give you a track record of each summer. 2009 and 2010, we were pretty much at maximum capacity. I'm not going to take more than 18 kids per session just because it doesn't provide quality lessons and the quality is above quantity to me most importantly so we were at our max we were going 11 hours a day 18 students an hour and that's when in 2010 we started opening up some satellite locations that alleviated some of that so our, our actual numbers for the summer for 2009 and 2010 were at their peak highest they went down in 2011 because we started using one other pool and by 2012 we were using four other pools so it went down even more and this summer we're scheduled to be using six other pools besides this pool so it's going to alleviate some of that demand off of this location so I don't anticipate the the amount of bodies and traffic that has been here over the last six years to ever increase if anything it's going to be going down or staying about where it has been last summer thank you uh, do you have any other questions board have any other questions for the applicant don't believe they do miss hill if you will please have a seat we'll call you back up in a minute at this time we'll allow 10 minutes for those who want to speak in favor of the the uh, applicant does anyone want to speak in favor we're going to have 10 minutes here Thing on. That's okay. on. Okay. Uh, my name is Fernando Battle, and I live at 175 Stokes Drive. I'm the immediate neighbor to Miss Hill, um, and uh, for the, I've been living there for the last six years. And I can say that, quite honestly, the, the I have noticed no traffic, um, no noise, uh, anything 
of the sort. Um, as a matter of fact, they've, they've been model uh, neighbors. And so I think this is a great idea, and I would hope that you guys approve it. Um, again, I do live right next door to them, and um, I have noticed no impact whatsoever. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bottom. Does anyone else want to speak in favor of this applicant? Hi, I'm Donna Oliver. I live at 6301 Browns Mill Road in Lithonia, Georgia. That's DeKalb County. And I just want to say we make the trip every summer for four weeks of the summer. We come five days a week. I bring my grandchildren. And while we're there in Henry County, there's not a single day of those five days that we don't stop and feed those grandchildren or run by and pick them up something from one of the stores there. We spend a good deal of money in Henry County during the summer. Thank so, you. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that I, I spend a lot more money in Henry County than I do any place else. Uh, also, when I'm talking about the parking situation, I've got to say we I, I've had 9 o'clock classes, I've had 11 o'clock classes, 2 o'clock classes, 3 o'clock classes, and never has there been a problem with parking. There's always traffic coming in. There's never anybody going out when we're pulling in. We get, the, you know, the people who are coming for another, another class, we come in, there's plenty of places for us to park, and then people leave after all that our group gets there. So there's never any conflicting traffic going on. And there's no problem with parking. There's plenty of parking because most of the people, when I talk to the parents there, most of them are bringing their nieces and nephews along with their children or some neighborhood kids are coming. So it's not like those 18, ch 18 children, there's 18 families there, there's not. You know, somebody, there's all people always bring other children with them, so there's not a parking problem. Thank you very much. Thank and I hope you'll support Jennifer Hill. Anyone else? How are we doing? Okay. Hi, my name is Holly King. I live at 95 Oakleaf Drive in Stockbridge. Um, I'm a parent that has had two children that took swim lessons at the swim center at the home location. I am also an instructor. And I just want to point out to the board to remind you that the swim lessons in the home location are really only for the summer months. I teach at another location, an, an indoor location at Locust Grove, and I teach all year round. So I would like for you guys to take the consideration that the traffic and the parking are really only from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And even when you go over there in July, especially late July, during the afternoon, there's not a lot of cars there. There's not a lot of people. By the time the summer's dwindling down and children are getting ready to go back to school and parents are getting back to school, sometimes we don't have any classes in the afternoon hours. This has been alleviated, of course, by the other locations that she has because she's been able to have classes throughout Henry County. So I would like for you guys to take that into consideration that it is only a certain time period that the swim lessons are conducted. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Yolanda Thornton from Stockbridge 125 Crown Glen Way, Stockbridge, Georgia. I moved here about five years ago from Florida, and my, um, both of my children took classes with Ms. Jennifer Hill. Um, one of the things I loved about her is that they learned more here in Stockbridge with Ms. Jennifer than they did in Florida, where there's lots of swimming pools. Um, I have not taken lessons yet. I've been putting it off every summer. My children typically go to her home in the summertime, and um, one of, another reason why I like it is because there is a, a small group to where the children are able to learn. Um, she's able to spend, her teachers are able to spend more time with the children to focus on what they need and what their needs are and the types of skills that they need. That's, that's not taught um, particularly in Florida at that particular time anyhow. Um, like the backstrokes and different types of strokes. Um, I keep telling her I'm going to take classes and I am because watching their children and kind of helped me not be so afraid and um, I'm only going to take them with her because I'm afraid anywhere else <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I'm in support of Ms. Jennifer Hill's <coughs> zoning thank you thank you If we can ask those who are speaking to fill out a form before they leave, yes, they can state their name. Yes, um, please. Hopefully they've already filled one out. 
My name is Robin Overby. I live at 28 Daily Walk, McDonough, Georgia. Uh, we moved here in 1998 from South Florida, which we lived there about nine years with our older children. And they had, from the time they were six months old, they had taken swimming lessons when we moved here. My girls, I couldn't find any place to take swimming lessons. It took me until they were like four and five years old which scared me because we go home to Florida where there's lots of pools and canals. Um, Jennifer Hill was a blessing to us. She, um, our girls learned proficient swimming there. Uh, her t technique is far um, succeeds what um, my children in Florida learned. Um, she's very proficient at what she does and her instructors are, are uh, model what she teaches. Um, we are in favor of her co continuing her um, uh, efforts there and uh, we've been there also in the morning and the afternoon and never had a problem with traffic ever and so again we're in favor of this thank you thank you my name is Dakina McCoy I live at 406 Woodton Knoll in Stockbridge Georgia um, I'm here in support of Ms. Jennifer. Um, all three of my children have taken classes with Ms. Jennifer during the summers, and it has really been a blessing to us because my husband and I are not the best swimmers, so it was very important for us, for our children, to know how to swim and to do it the right way. Um, we all know that each summer or each year, there are so many children that unfortunately pass away um, from drowning deaths when it's supposed to be a fun and joyous time to be able to swim. So I think it's very important the service that Ms. Jennifer is providing um, to be able to teach the children how to swim and you know if should they ever come into a situation where they need to try to save their lives that they can. So I'm in support of Ms. Jennifer's classes. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else want to speak in favor of this applicant? Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition to this applicant? Let me let me reset the clock, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, good evening. My name is John Pierce. I live at 25 Stokes Drive, Stockbridge, Georgia, yes, sir. which is right at the very entrance of Stokes Crossing. Um, no doubt in my mind that Miss Hill is a great swimming instructor, but this is not about her ability to teach swimming. It's about opening up a um, private membership recreational pool in the middle of our Stokes Crossing development. And I would um, like to submit to you that the reason I'm dressed tonight in the way I am is I was taking a walk in the subdivision and I didn't even see the sign until I came across her driveway and her house. Um, it's, she lives about 1.6 miles into the subdivision. There are probably 50 to 75 neighbors of hers that wouldn't even be aware unless they drove to the end of the cul-de-sac to see her sign. It's not out in the front of the development where everybody or all the residents would see it and notice it and be able to either object or um, support her. I would like, what I would like to see happen tonight is I would like you to see you table this for 30 days so that I can ask my neighbors what they think about this because I don't believe anybody else knows about it there may be uh, she had one neighbor in support that lives at uh, 175 which is the house next door to hers on the south side he wouldn't be affected by the traffic coming in and out of the development I don't know um, Maybe you can inform me, but I have not seen her plan. So um, I don't know if she's going to be the sole instructor or not. Uh, she says that she's only going to limit her classes to 18, but if she has two or three instructors, they may take on 18 each. I don't know. So I have some questions about that. I would like to find out some more information. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Do you have anyone else that wants to speak in opposition to Ms. Hill? Being none, 
Uh, Miss Hill, could you come back up, please? Does the board have any other questions for Ms. Hill? I've got a question. Go ahead, Mr. something, uh, especially after the last question we had. Uh, it's my understanding that no traffic, additional traffic will be coming through Stokes, driving through the subdivision. It will all come from uh, a gravel driveway. No, and this, this neighbor, much like the neighbor who came up and spoke on my behalf, that neighbor I just actually met two weeks ago, he said, I never even knew you conducted a business back here. I've had this business here for six if years. If you will, please, Ms. Hill, direct your uh, talk up here. Yes. Thank you. You want me to explain for him, Wanda? Okay. Um, the, uh, just to clarify for the board, the access off of Wilkerson Drive um, is located here, and uh, this is the access she utilizes for the swim center. Um, no access will be, or no travel through the subdivision um, will come will come through the subdivision on Stokes Drive as part of the um, s development standards for the conditional use the access is not permitted within a subdivision so okay thank you, okay. Thank you. I, thank you. yeah I have a question Miss Hill uh, based on the number that you gave us 18 will you at any point is that a get throughout a cut throughout the course of a day or throughout the course of an hour explain the throughout 18. the course of an hour okay. at any one given time throughout the course of an hour okay okay i have a follow-up question to that if if, if the limitation is 18 that's uh, that's irrespective of how many instructors you might have if you oh no i would never go over 18 period okay be so, because so, we just like i said i'm not going to sacrifice quality well, for quantity so, so if you have three instructors uh they'll each be, te be teaching, say, six students each. Right, exactly. For, for a total exactly. of 18. Yes. <laughs> One other question follow up to that is that in proportion is six per how many instructors do you actually have? We typically class? run four staff members on a class. So we will have one group of 10 students with an instructor and an assistant. And then we'll have another group in the shallow end of eight students with an instructor and an assistant. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions from the board? If you will, please have a seat again, please, Ms. Hill. Could you call the case, please? Um, Excuse me. Before I call the case, um, Wanda omitted an additional condition that we discussed um, during the work session, so she just needs to add that mm -hmm. in to see if the board is agreeable to adding that condition. Should you all recommend approval? Okay. okay. Dear, um, during the uh, zoning advisory uh, workshop um, prior to this meeting, the public um, workshop, it was discussed uh, to add the condition that the applicant shall attain a business license from Henry County Occupational Tax. A, um, department for the swim center. Okay. That would be condition number four. Okay. Okay, that would be condition number four. Okay. Uh, do we have a a motion on this? I'm gonna call the case then. Oh, we gotta call the case. Okay, let's call the case. CE thirteen. I'm with this. CE 1306, Jennifer Hill of Stockbridge, Georgia, requests a conditional use for property located at 177 Stokes Drive in Landlot 156 of the 12th District. The request is for a private membership recreational facility, not in a subdivision, and again, the property is located in District 5. Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion in regard to this case? I would like to make a motion of approval based on the staff's approval and an added condition of a max of 18 students at any given time. All right, I have a motion, and I'm not going to try to repeat all that. Uh, hopefully, we've got it recorded somewhere. Do I have a second to it? Second motion. Mr. Bailey seconds. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Opposed like sign, motion carries unanimous. Okay, that's behind us. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, at this point, we'd like to move on to agenda item number five. 1303. Donna Lopez of Liburn, Georgia, requests a rezoning from C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C3 Highway Commercial for property located at 3470 Highway 42 North and Landlot 33 of the 12th District. The property consists of 5.04 plus or minus acres and the request is for a truck trailer storage lot. The property is located in District 4 and Jeremy Gilbert is representing planning staff. Good evening, Chairman and Board Members. <clears throat> As Ms. Matthews stated, the property is located at 3470 Highway 42 North in Stockbridge. The property is currently zoned C1, neighborhood commercial, and the applicant is requesting to rezone that property to C3, highway commercial. The applicant is proposing to use the site for parking and outside storage of trucks and trailers. Um, the applicant's proposed improvements include a secured fence around the perimeter of the property as well as a gated access. Um, the site will also be graded to provide a level parking area and outside storage. A conceptual site plan that is uh, shown on the overhead uh, was prepared by Terry Boomer, PE of Civil Consulting Engineers, Inc., illustrating that the parking area with outside storage of materials. There's a detention area and a future commercial area along Highway 42 for future development. The Unified Land Development Code in Chapter 7 Section 7.0205 requires the following for outdoor storage. Um, in the C3 zoning district, outdoor storage involving machinery and equipment, service areas for vehicles in need of major automotive repair materials or construction or distribution are permissible only in C3, M1, and M2. Um, outside storage shall be located in the rear side yard. Outside storage shall be fully concealed with a solid fence in addition to any buffer requirements set forth in Section 5.0200. Um, the future land use map does designate this property for future commercial land uses. Um, therefore, the request is supported by our future land use map um, in zoning the property to C3 as it's currently zoned commercial. Um, right now, the overall zoning scheme of the area is there's C3 and C1 zoned properties to the north. There are C2 and RMH properties to the south, and there's M2 heavy manufacturing properties zoned to the west. Um, the site currently meets all of the requirements um, for the outside storage as well as for the C3 zoning district. It does meet the purpose and intent of what the Unified Land Development Code requires for the C3 zoning district. Staff does recommend approval of the request with nine conditions. Um, out of those nine conditions that are in your book, we would like to make changes to condition three, proposed condition three and proposed condition eight. On number three, we would like for the condition um, where it states the gated access shall meet the requirements regarding vehicle stacking and access per Georgia Department of Transportation instead of Henry County Department of Transportation. And then on condition number eight, would like to strike the words meeting the requirements of section 4.0109 of the ULDC and just require the outdoor lighting plan be approved by environmental compliance prior to the issuance of a development permit. Um, again, planning staff does recommend approval of C3 with the nine attached conditions. Okay. Any I'll answer any questions, Jim. <laughs> Jeremy, I do have uh, one question. Can you give me uh, a typical example of what might fall up on the C3? I can. Uh, the permitted uses listed that are listed in our zoning ordinance for the C3 is anything that's permitted in C1 and C2, automotive and truck sales, boat sales, commercial kennels for boarding of pets, dry cleaning plants not employing more than 20 persons, farmers markets, feed and seed stores, heavy equipment sales and service, major automotive repair, um, you can have motels and hotels, outdoor theaters, recreational vehicle sales and service, trade shops including electrical, plumbing, gutter, machine and HVAC contractors, um, used car and auto sales, and then other uses that may be determined by planning staff to be compatible with the above listed. Okay. Any further questions? Thank you, Jeremy. You're welcome. Will the applicant come forward? Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Thanks, Jeremy. My name is Terry Boomer, 122 Cedarwoods Trail, K-1. 
Canton, Georgia. I'm the president of Civil Consulting Engineers. I'm here on a technical advisory capacity for the applicant. I am her agent. I prepared the site plan. I've been working commercial developments in truck parking facilities for the past 25 years. Um, with regards to the conditions that staff has presented, I'd like to discuss a few of those conditions. And I know during the work session, uh, uh, the gentleman on the end had indicated uh, a change to some of the planning um, materials that may be required or requested of. Um, so if I may, I can go down this bullet uh, list item one by one. Um, one that it sp is specific to the plantings uh, requesting a 30 foot buffer. L as part of the working with staff, we came up with an allowance to to disallow or not mandate parking within the interior islands because of the nature of a truck driver. And we would allocate the 12% around the, around the uh, parking area for landscaping. We would like the 30-foot buffer, if imposed and agreed to as a 30-foot buffer, to be included in that 12%. As 30-foot takes a tremendous swath out of our, our parking count and overall yield. However, if, if we go to Leland Cypress, which is a very dense buffer, and I do agree with you that it's, it's, it's almost an opaque natural buffer, I think you could do that in a 10 or 15 percent, uh, a 10 or 15 foot swath and still get the dense, dense coverage. We're not buffering homes, we're just buffering screen, a visual screening to the roadway. And we also have a six foot opaque fence beyond that as, as safety and a visual deterrent as well. Um, that's my discussion about number one. Number two, uh, we, have, we have no issues with. Uh, number three, a six foot opaque fence. This says at the, at the perimeter or boundary, as we mentioned, to be consistent with number one, we'll move it to behind the shrubbery and, and planting so that the plantings are the first thing seen and not the opaque fence. Uh, number four, uh, no interior parking landscaping we discussed. Number five, sidewalks we have no problem with or no issues. Number six, all buildings shall be constructed of brick stone. We have no problems with that uh, number six as a restriction, and we don't have a building going in at this point in time. Uh, number seven, the dumpster we have no problems with shall be masonry three sides and gated. It, um, number eight, outdoor lighting meeting the code. We have no problem with that. In fact, um, I don't even mind uh, complying with the new regs that are on board and providing a photometrics. I don't want to spill over or splash over any anyway. Typically, this is security and safety lighting, and it's not a high intensity lighting at anyway. And number nine, uh, notwithstanding, stands on its own merits. Thank you. And I'm here to answer any technical engineering land development questions that you may have. Does the board have any questions? Do you know if they're going to be storing uh, like reefer trailers that will be running all night or anything like that? I, I don't know right now. Um, I don't think that there would be a high demand for that in this area. There's no restroom facilities. There's no um, electricity hookups proposed for the development. Um, the owners of this property are paving contractors and they're doing quite a bit of work right now in Henry County and during the course of their daily operations they've noticed random trucks and random trailers parked at di various locations up and down the 42 corridor and other uh, 81 and other um, major uh, commercial corridors and he started talking to some business owners and they felt that it would probably be a good idea to provide a one consolidated local area for the for the random truck trailer parking that's here. Okay. Do I have a question? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I have a couple of questions. Um, um, uh, on what is shown as the materials yard um, at at the upper side of the of the property north of. It looks like it's going to be north of the area that that, that you would pave. What uh, what do you envision for that? What kind of materials are we you know talking about, and what type of surface would you envision well, in that area? If if he like I say he's a paving contractor, so it could be paved or it could be millings. 
um, compacted millings, which are the grinding of and the re-emulsification of the asphalt, um, the, the bituminous materials put in and then compacted and laid back down. It'd be, and I think the code calls for a dust-free surface. So in, in whatever the surface will be, it'll be able to support a trailer and it'll be dust-free. It'll, it'll be like paving, if not, if not paving, per uh, uh, Georgia DOT spec. Uh, the materials that may be stored in that area are miscellaneous trailers and or equipment that don't require a 50 by 12 foot parking space uh, for your, your truck and trailer parking. But what about sand and gravel or, you know, other types of materials? I don't, to pay if we have sand and gravel, that would be in bend, uh, bend in areas, walled in areas so <coughs> that they would be contained. Okay. Okay. My second question is if, uh, if there are refrigerated trucks that are going to be in this area, and you said, said that there might not be very many, but uh, would, they, uh, would the applicants consider that those, uh, th that an area be, be designated for those types of trucks up towards Highway 42 rather than Absolutely. next to the residential Absolutely. area? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have one question. You indicated that there was no billings at this time. Uh, do you foresee any billings, or what's your overall plan for this? When this we open? put in truck trailer facilities, what's typical is a central receiving and loading dock and perhaps a dispatch office. Nothing more, nothing less. No sales, no manufacturing. Uh, every now and then we have put in a, 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 a work garage facility for the, for the trucks and trailers, but as this is not going to be a central location to any specific uh, major carrier, we don't anticipate that there will be a work facility or work garage. So if there was ever a, uh, a building constructed, it would be just a typical loading, receiving dock and dispatch office. Okay. And the next question is, do you guys own any other parking facilities uh, as, as of this point? They, have, they do not own a parking facility in Henry County. Okay. They are par in partners and concerts across the nation on parking facilities, but they, they are not fee simple owners. The only, they do have a land under development right now in Henry County that's a materials yard and it, for their uh, equipment and materials, but not a truck trailer facility such as this. And where is that facility? It's on 42 as well, Be Beth Bellamy Court, uh, okay. right outside of Bellamy Court um, Industrial Park. It's okay. almost a it, county now, is that the facility the across the street? Almost or? across the street. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now I noticed we was out at the site location. I noticed that facility is up for sale. Is which one? Out at the facility the one that's under across construction? the street. Right. And the reason we just finished. Right. And the reason we noticed that because they they parking. I had a question about that parking. So I guess that's why I'm asking this question, Bennett. You say that you actually own or they own that facility. Uh, what's the intent of it? It's actually for sale. I, that's news to me. I did not know. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I know that they've owned both of the pieces for one year, so they've not been in a great rush to get them installed, but now that he's got contracts in the area, he's pushing forward. Okay. Does the board have any other questions? You, you may be seated. Sir. Thank you. At this time, we will allow 10 minutes for those in favor of the case. For those in favor of the case, we have 10 minutes. At this time, we will allow 10 minutes for those in opposition of the case. Please state your name and address for the record, ma'am. Yes, my name is Sheila Jones. I live at 65 Boulevard Drive, Stockbridge live um, two doors up from the crossroads where you turn left to go to this property and uh, the reason why I'm in opposition is because it actually does come to the residential road and if you go across the properties I'm only four doors up and at night everything echoes through there and I know truckers are day and night you can put Leland Cypresses I know a person that has a property that has C3 behind it She's planted her own Leland Cypresses. We have to stop our conversation. 
and with C3, you're talking about what can go in there. This might be what they're proposing, but once it's zoned that, they can put whatever they want. They could even put garbage trucks to park on there. And then you're talking about we got the smell and everything. So I'm in opposition of that, and there's several other people that will be, but we'll have to present that at another time. But there is a neighbor that lives right across the street that wants to speak too. Um, and I also did email all y'all <laughs> and the, the zoning board and the board of commissioners because I know in the meeting y'all said y'all didn't hear any opposition. But I did email all y'all, and I will email, email you again and be passing your email address out to everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, anyone else in opposition of the case? Here comes lady. Please state your name and address for the record, ma'am. My name is Sarah Franklin. I live at 160 Wilson Road, and uh, it's right, the land is right straight across in front of my house. And uh, all the noise from the recycling place down there, it, it gets so bad at 2 o'clock in the morning till it wakes me up. And that's all the way across 42. And if all this comes in there, that's going to be bad on me and everybody else up through there. And they were more supposed to be in here, but they couldn't get here because they had to work. And uh, but we're uh, against all of this because we can't stand all that truck, and I have asthma. And uh, if I had to get asthma, I get bronchitis, and I go with pneumonia. And all that smell and all that, I cannot take it. And uh, we've got to, we've got to just say no on that because most of the, most of the width is, is on my street, Wilson Road. They got a land. They'll probably come in off of 42. But most of it is, is on Wilson Road, the longest part. I don't know how much the EV is on the front where they'd have to come in and out at, I don't know. But I know we've got lots of noise out there, and whenever the garbage trucks comes up through there and picks up garbage, it's, it's awful. And, I, and we can't stand it. And then those trucks be with diesels and everything. No, no sir. We can't do it. And I'd like for you just to take it down now and we not have to go through this again. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else in opposition? Can I ask another question? Well, you have six minutes. I just want to ask a question for y'all to explain to me. This is on the future land use map uh, as commercial, and it's zone commercial now. And from what I understand, C1 is supposed to benefit the neighborhood and everything, like retail and everything. How did C3 or all that get in there to the future land use map? And I know I have family that owns four properties on Wilson that is in this future land use map, and we'd like to know how we can get our property off this future land use map. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, to answer that, the property was designated as commercial based on the comprehensive land use plan that was put into place in 2009. In 2006, the county received um, a, an outside firm to work on our comprehensive plan. They held numerous um, public participation meetings from 2006 to 2009. Um, receiving input based on what was currently on the ground, what they saw from our previous future land use map, um, and invited the public at the time to verify and to kind of see what their envisions were. And through that, the plan was, was crafted that listed this area to remain as a commercial corridor. Um, if you would like to be removed out of that commercial corridor, an application to amend the comprehensive land use plan can be submitted to the Planning and Zoning Office. Um, it would then go uh, to the Zone Advisory Board and to the Board of Commissioners for their approval um, to remove it from the future land use map as commercial to an alternative um, future land use. Um, again, there was um, a number of years that were put into crafting where and sp specific zonings and specific uh, designations were to be laid out throughout all of Henry County um, to meet our demands of what our plan would be in the year 2030. And, and if I could just add one additional comment that may help address further 
Um, as Jeremy's indicated, the future land use map does designate the property for commercial. What the comprehensive plan does not do is designate the, the levels of intensity. It just tells us as a staff that commercial is appropriate for this area or commercial is what the county envisions for this area. So as far as the difference between the C1, C2, and C3, the code doesn't specify that. It just says commercial. Um, and I just wanted to make sure I clarified that for, for the record. Anyone else in opposition of this case? Yes, and also, ma'am, we would like for you to fill out a form with okay. your name and address, please. This is a residential area, okay. and uh, everybody on Wilson Road, they're all the houses up through there. And then there's a house right here on the corner where this property, where he's talking about this property. Well, right up here at this side, there are more houses. And on back over here, more houses on uh, Dixie Drive and all. And we, uh, we all are in noise from what's already crossed the road with that recycling place. And it wakes you up at midnight, like, at like 2 o'clock in the morning. And we can't have any more um, noises there, you know, like that, because it's it just uh, too bad, too much on us. And uh, that's, uh, that's what i got to say right now, and I uh, hope that we can uh, do something about it and not have it. <coughs> In there because we don't need it and we don't need all them. My husband worked for a truck line, what he did. And uh, I know what it is because I went where he worked and all, and I know the fumes. And I drove a school bus for 10 years in Henry County. And I know what those fumes of the, that diesel and everything. So I'm against it all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Will the applicant come back, please? Excuse me, Chairman, as the applicant is coming back, I wanted to illustrate for the citizens that are here as well as the ones that are watching this on the TV, we've uh, illustrated here the zoning map of what the current zoning in the area is. And as you can see along Highway 42, where this property is located, all of the property that fronts along Highway 42 is currently already zoned for commercial. Um, the majority of what's to the north is already currently zoned C3. And then what's to the south is either zone C2 or C1, um, as in this case, this one is zone C1. I'd also forgot to mention earlier, just wanted to illustrate it for the citizens that are here and, again, at, that are watching on TV, that they are, the applicant is um, requested to do a no-access easement to Wilson Road, as well as we've added that as a condition, that there would not be any access that would impede that residential neighborhood that all access to and from the site would be from Highway 42. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy. Right. Any additional questions for the applicant? Mm. Okay, sir, you may be seated. Mr. Chair, members of the board, thank you. Okay. Let me call the case, please. Three, Donna Lopez of Lilburn, Georgia, requests a rezoning from C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C3 Highway Commercial for property located at 3470 Highway 42 North in Landline 33 of the 12th District. The property consists of 5.04 plus or minus acres, and the request is for a truck trailer storage lot. The property is located in District 4. If we, if we approve this, to uh, replace in condition number one, A, B, C, and D, with six foot Leland Cypress spaced at three foot apart. Are you, are you making a motion for approval or? I don't know. You add a condition. You're adding a condition. Jim. Jim. Uh, I'd also like to add, uh, add to that motion, if, uh, if, if the board would consider this, is that uh, that uh, under item eight, that uh, that the that an outdoor lighting plan shall be subject to county inspection department approval, and that also that uh, that uh, a number of spaces towards the highway 42 side of the uh, of, of, of this property. And I'd say um, uh, one dozen spaces uh, would be designated for uh, refrigeration trucks that might you know, run you know, during the evening. 
and then I think also we agreed that or, or, or had proposed that the uh, that the that the that the Leland cypress trees uh, spaced three feet apart and six feet high would be in front of the um, opaque fence within the 30 foot uh, buffer. That's pretty close to Leland cypress. I have. <laughs> I basically have two amendments to the. Right. I just needed some clarification. Is there a motion on the floor or are we just discussing the item? Because if there's a motion on the floor, if Mr. Tony made a motion, we'll need to get a second and then Mr. Risher, the comments that you previously made would go in at that point. Okay. So if there if, if there was a motion, then I'll need to get a second on that motion. And then we'll just add the comments that you've made, Mr. Risher, unless you were seconding. All right. Well, I can second it. Uh, Thank with you. The conditions that uh, were previously stipulated Thank at you. this point. Okay. It's been motioned by Mr. Tony and second by uh, Mr. Risher. Now, can you repeat it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do I have a vote? All those in favor. All in favor? All, right. All opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. And also wanted to just let the, app, the citizens in the crowd know that this will be scheduled for the next available Board of Commissioners meeting for the final decision. Okay. Okay. All right. You can ask for some public input and or comment. That's right. Is there any public input or comments at this point? I'd like to get a motion to adjourn the So made. Second. It's been motion and second to adjourn. It's done. <laughs>